Any man who put his likeness in stone is a fool in my book. Junk. The child has a small mirror in his hands. He holds it up at angles, inspecting his eyes, his chin, the crown of his head. He spots you and his arms snap to his sides. I'm not supposed to talk to strangers. Are you a sorcerer? One of those guys that brings the bad void things here. The child looks at you straight on unafraid, searching your face. He lifts his mirror to his nose, closes one eye, and looks at himself again. I don't see any source on you or me. I guess they're wrong or crazy. <laughs> Maybe you're right. At least they don't mind where anyone goes. They know we can't leave the island, but it's a lot nicer out here than inside. But you didn't die. There isn't anywhere safer. That's what I mean. You'll see. I guess I am. But it's just normal to be scared. Nowhere is it scary. Imagine having the gall to want a hundred generations gazing at your own face. Collars were supposed to keep those things at bay. The face is familiar. What's left of it? He was aboard the ship.
junk. You spot a strange lizard gazing over the water with a steady, malcontent stare. His skin is of a bright blood-red color. Could he be...? Yes, you recognize him from the ship. It would seem you're not the only one who survived the tentacles of the deep. The lizard turns about with the graceful ease of a dancer, or a duelist. You lock eyes with his, two smoldering embers that sizzle your very soul. I did survive, yes. And chances are I wouldn't have, had you not returned to the aid of your fellow passengers down in that dreadful hold. You have my gratitude. Hand over heart, he salutes you with a bob of the head. More than a nod, though less than a bow. Yes, I'm sure you've all the makings of a hero and all that, but let's not get carried away, shall we? Nevertheless, one good turn does deserve another, so... As far as the whole slave business is concerned, let's just forget about it. You may as well have your freedom. Now then, if there's nothing further... I'm sure I don't mean to sound condescending, but I had thought it quite self-evident I was gazing out over the waves. He sighs dramatically. Tell me, what do you see when you cast your glance over this ocean? White, which goes for the dry parts round here too, I imagine. He looks out over the water once more, and so do you. A few tranquil moments pass as the waves lap against your thoughts. As for myself, when I consider this vast expanse before us, I see an empire. I see continents dotted with mighty cities. And shimmering along the soft curve of the sea's horizon, I picture the palaces that formed my paradise. Lost. What do you mean, what do I mean? I mean just what I say. I had a very actual empire that I lost. Suddenly, having all the air of being deeply offended, he stares at you with utter incredulity. Well, don't just stand there gawking like an ape at an abacus. Or do you really mean to tell me you don't know who I am? Oh, may the seven have mercy on their own creation. I am the Red Prince, the All-Conqueror, the World Tamer, the Spouse of the Sun. Of course you know me. There's a brief moment's pause, during which his grandiloquent pose deflates ever so slightly. That said, I suppose I must own up to the fact that I find myself rather in between All-Conquering and World Taming opportunities at the moment. The grandeur that is my fate has a hit a bit of a snag. But never you worry. For the throne I was destined, and my throne I shall have. Truly. A kind offer indeed. And you've already proven to be trustworthy enough. You came back for the others on that ship after all. Fine. I accept. On one condition. For reasons I'll not disclose right now, it is imperative that I should meet with a dreamer, one of the mystics of my kind. I've reason to believe one of them may be present on this island. Promise me we'll look for him, and I'll extend you the blessing of my company. Jolly good. So, now that that's settled, first things first. Even if you are as versed in the art of eloquence as I am, that our swords will be doing a lot of the talking from here on out goes without saying. As a born fighter, I prefer the perfection of the blade myself. 
but I'm well acquainted with the secrets of magic and, yes, even subterfuge. What say you? Very well. Onwards, then, to victory or death. The Red Prince nods and gives you a smile that wavers ever so delicately between courtesy and contempt. Now, as you're away, you'll be travelling with a prince. Proper forms of address include Your Majesty, Your Royal Highness, or, or if you're feeling particularly frivolous, my lord. As your luck would have it, I seem to be fresh out of luggage, so you won't be required to carry my belongings. Of course, there are other forms of protocol to bear in mind, but I'll see to it you'll pick up the rest as we go. So, with Yes, by all means, let us partake in the art of conversation. I intend to rule an empire one day, not a tiny outcropping in the sea, lording over gulls and guppy fish. To that end, I suggest we focus on the obvious. A farewell to Fort Joy and a hello to the mainland. As am I. A prince should die of old age or on the battlefield. Anything else could be construed as weakness of character. That said, I've the distinct feeling I wasn't meant to die today, for despite your heroics, I was still cast into the water. I sank. I drowned. But there was something in the water. A voice made of air that soothed my flooding lungs. There was sudden light, warmth, life. Truly, how intriguing. To hear a voice whilst drowning is a rather specific delusion to share, is it not? Still, I wonder if... He hesitates. Are you a religious person? I'm rather relieved to hear it. Religious persons tend to be all too self-important in their supposed humility. As for myself, I perform the ancient rites of prayer and ceremony with a kind of languid indulgence. After all, when one is revered by many as a living god oneself, public deprecation would be needlessly self-important as well, wouldn't you say? There was a small incident which prompted my many rivals to move against me. Technically, they had the letter of the law on their side. Such a nuisance, the law. Quite necessary to keep the common in line, of course, but one such as myself it should exempt as a matter of course. What I meant was that, being authority, I shouldn't be under any thumb. I had thought that was perfectly obvious. Sadly, that enlightened point of view quite clearly turned out to be academic. If not, we wouldn't be having this very conversation. I hardly know you as yet. Let's leave some mystery in the relationship, shall we? We can exchange criminal records later. There isn't much to say, but for the fact that I simply must. It's the portent of it all. I can feel it. Rebel and justified it is too. You will be a witness to wonders, I assure you. As certain as the sun, such is my conviction. I will be, then grow beyond being.
rubbish. A black cat. A herald of wisdom in my homeland. The cat's eyes are clouded and grey, but it stares at you with acute intensity. Its eyes clear, and it shakes its head, confused. What's this? I found something. One must put in due effort if one is to reap the proper reward. Spotted something. leads. As the alcove opens up, 
you see the same skeleton that you met on the boat before it sank. He's still not wearing his mask. He's leaning over a corpse, prodding and pulling at the skin of its face. Bugger. How on earth am I supposed to... Oh. Skeletal fingers reach down and grip the skin of the dead man's face, pulling sharply upwards. After a few more tugs at the man's cheeks, the skeleton relents, letting the head drop to the ground with a damp thud. Damnation. That stuck fast. I wonder, does the beard act as some form of anchor? Ah! No! Stay back! Don't... Oh, it's you. I must admit I'm surprised. Perhaps you're more buoyant than I suspected. Oh, yes. An exceptionally common, but exceptionally valuable commodity. A face. A face that seems rather stubbornly attached to his skull. I would normally employ a tool to delicately, but viciously, rip the face from the body. I could then craft a mask to hide my bone. But as I lack such a tool... The skeleton grabs the corpse by the cheeks and pulls hard, grunting in frustration as the body's skin holds firm. Carved? Please. You hardly think I am one of your breed, do you? You have never seen anything like it because you have never met anyone like me. Simply put, I am an Eternal, and you are not. You have my sympathies. Indeed, no one seems to have the good taste to be. My people are rather... absent. At least from this realm. As for the others... well... There is an excavation site at the Black Pit's oil fields. Perhaps there I'll find my answers. A cult? Hardly. We were a race that existed before the idea of race was needed. We were all one. I could ask you to imagine an Eternal as a creature of incredible intelligence and skill. But I fear the limits of your imagination would not do us justice. We studied the mysteries of the universe. We created works of great art. We... We disappeared. But I will find them. Wherever they are, I will find them. We will have our world again. Well, that hardly seems relevant. But if you must know, I was inconvenienced for a time. Several centuries, in fact, or perhaps millennia, one tends to lose track. I was sealed in a tomb for daring to be curious about the world. It seems our king did not agree that the universe should be explored to its full potential. Perhaps I should thank him. It seems I was spared whatever happened to the others. I wonder if flowers would be appropriate. Ah, well, that is the curious thing. They are clearly absent from this world, and yet they are everywhere. Every one of your races resembles them in some manner. And the statues you have built to your gods look remarkably familiar. Perhaps my people have ascended to some new realm. Or perhaps your gods are merely a folk memory. Regardless, they are not here. But I will find them. Wherever they are, I will find them. I suppose, circumstances being what they are, it could be advantageous. You seem more at ease in this world than I. A guide would certainly be useful. Excellent. While we are conversing, perhaps you notice that I am rather skilled in, well, all things. Of course, the arcane arts are my little speciality, but being a brilliant wizard does not mean I cannot handle blade or bow. So, which do you require for this enterprise of yours? I could do that with one hand behind my spine. Now, shall we get on? There is rather a lot to see. Splendid. Very well. Let's be off.
You hear a small whimpering sound from behind a basket. You peer behind it and find a small human child holding her knees and trembling. The child quiets and seems comforted by your presence. She looks up at you with curious eyes. Her eyes lock with yours for a moment. She places her head on her knees and sits quietly. You hear a small whimpering sound from behind a basket. You peer behind it and find a small human child holding her knees and trembling. The child quiets and seems comforted by your presence. She looks up at you with curious eyes. The child nods and reaches up to you. As you hold her, her breathing grows slow and calm. Her wet face is damp on your neck. She lets go and looks up at you with a small smile. Thanks. You're nice. You can have this. I found it outside, but I can't read it yet. That's next year, and then I'll learn it. She nestles back into her spot on the ground and starts tracing figures. A little family in front of a house in the dirt. Psst. Go. Get out. You are not welcome here. Go, man pig. She eyes you suspiciously. Please. Please, just go. Psst. Go. Get up. Oh, please. Where is she? You go with us? Who are you? Are you from the shelter? She says nothing of another. Fear, alas! She is so late! Never mind. It is not your concern. You leave. She leans forward. Her eyes are wet with fear as she takes your hand. Please, do not lead anyone here. Enough that you travel with me. Go on then, bark away. Let's see if we can find any method in it. Well, I thought a brief swim in the sea, lying in the sun for a while, and maybe read a nice book. Or perhaps, and this is just a thought, we could find my mask and escape this wretched island. Oh, I think of them as little as possible. As much, I imagine, as you think of gadflies that buzz about you. Not that there is anything wrong with you, of course, just that you're... well, not all that impressive. That sounded dangerously close to an independent thought. How surprisingly self-aware of you. Regardless, further study will be required. In fact... The skeleton pulls a notebook from his robes and starts scribbling. After a moment, he pauses and looks back to you. Uh, uh, sorry, do carry on. Just act as you do in your natural environment. Simply pretend I'm not here. Go on then, bark away. Let's see if we can find any method in it. Ah, this is perhaps the first intelligent question you have asked. After all, one should always try to learn from one's betters. My people are a race far beyond anything that exists in the world today. We seek to master the secrets of the universe. We craft wonders to last through the ages, long after your crude tools have rusted to nothing. There is a great variety among our people. Some are tall and lithe, others short and muscled. 
Some come in a variety of eye-catching colors. Others you can barely see at all. This is what makes you such an abomination, you see. You almost look exactly like every other human out there, just as every lizard looks like every other lizard. Walking through this world is as repulsively bland as staring at a wall for a century. After a while, the very sight of you disgusts me. Uh, no offense, of course. I... I do not know. There are rumors that some have been found at the Black Pits, an oil field on Reaper's Coast. I was trying to uncover the truth when I was waylaid by these magisters. But wherever the artifacts of my people are, I will find them. We have not simply vanished into thin air. No. No, I should not. Not yet. Not until I know what truly befell my people. And, after all, I am still here, despite the Void Woken's best efforts. The Mask of the Shapeshifter? In my time, it was nothing more than a novelty. A toy, really. I crafted one for my child once. She spent the day trying to convince me that she was her mother, even though the face I used looked nothing like her. Of course, now that toy could be the difference between life and... Well, it makes a difference. With that mask, I can shapeshift and walk through this world looking like any other simple mortal. I could look like a lizard, a dwarf, a human, any creature whose face I can procure. It certainly makes traveling through towns easier. <sighs> Trust you bloody-minded beasts to turn a child's trinket into a wicked purpose. People like you are the reason it must be recovered. I am using the mask to keep myself safe from the violence of this world. Who knows what evil it could do in the hands of some mortal witch. Oh, it's quite simple. One just acquires a face, a source orb, and combines the two to make a face mask. Combining several of these single face masks along with a source orb will produce a mask of the shapeshifter. Frankly, I'm amazed everyone isn't doing it. Fear? Please, why would I fear these creatures? It's a practical choice, nothing more. Moving through this world is so much easier when you don't have to lecture some torch-wielding lunatics on the dangers of an open flame. Oh, of course there are. How many hundreds of thousands of you people have died over the years? Almost all of them seem to have been disposed of while still wearing perfectly serviceable faces. It's a terrific waste. Still, without the proper tool to remove the face from a corpse, I cannot take advantage of the many cadavers you're providing. So if you happen across anything that seems capable of ripping a face off a body, please do let me know. Ignorant! I dare say I have a better knowledge of this world than any creature living in it. Oh, I may be missing some social mores or be unaware of what king waged which war, but why nitpick? Waiting for a letter is tedious. What I have gone through is torture. Your history is an interminably dull list of mortals that were born, achieved nothing of worth, and then died. Certainly one may have expanded his kingdom, or another invented some way of pickling fish, but what does it matter? Where will your kingdoms be in 100 years? In 1,000? They will all be dust, along with each and every one of your great heroes. Your people and nations come and go, mayflies screaming their importance at a universe that cannot listen. But the universe is always there. The laws that govern your states change over centuries, but the laws of the world. Even when my people walked this land, a dropped apple still fell to the ground. I have yet to see the mortal king that can decree all apples must fall up from their trees, or order fire to produce cold instead of heat. No, these laws stretch to infinity. Understanding them lets you understand the world. 
That is knowledge worth having. Everything else is arguing over who has built the prettiest sandcastle as the waves creep closer. Are you certain you want to dismiss your companion? Yes, I can imagine it might be somewhat difficult for you to forever be in my shadow. Go on then, play in the sun. I have actual work to do. Quite right. Do seek my counsel. I highly recommend it. I intend to rule an empire one day, not a tiny outcropping in the sea, lording over gulls and guppy fish. To that end, I suggest we focus on the obvious. A farewell to Fort Joy and a hello to the mainland. Are you certain you want to dismiss your companion? Your loss. Transforming.
Are you ready for me to join for- Off we go then. Quite right. Do seek Mike. Are you certain you want to dismiss your loss? Here lies a nameless inmate. May he find the peace denied him in life. Spotted something.
again, can't you? He lifts. Mm, it could be worse, I suppose. You seem more... Very well. Ready for me to join? Off we go. nicer here than that stinking boat, huh? Sure wish more of us could have been saved. Though, I did see one of them wringing out their tunic at the shore a few hours ago, so I guess some of them survived at least. 